Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to have a look at another Swedish beer and this one is actually a collaboration between two of the best known Swedish breweries these days and I guess just generally two of the best Swedish breweries at the moment as well. So for this review then we are going to head up towards Gothenburg once again, Jutebor as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital and we're having a look at another beer from Dugas Bruggeri and this is one that they've done in collaboration with Omnipoil, the famous Swedish Gypsy Brewer from over in Stockholm. This is the barrel aged version of the Anagram which comes in at 15% ABV. Now the original Anagram you would have seen me review back in what like 2017 or something like that. Um, and that is a blueberry cheesecake stout actually which was really very very nice actually but the this I believe might be the second version of the barrel aged anagram because I've seen one on untapped that is only 14.5% and I'm sure that was released through Sweden at one point as well but um, it's definitely worth checking out any of these kind of big cakey imperial stouts that you'll find from Omnipoil and it's been ages actually since I've reviewed one of them so this video in some ways is a little bit overdue actually but this beer was released on the 8th of November 2019 through the Tilretlig Sortiment or Small Partiers or whatever we're supposed to call them now. So um, yeah, hopefully it's a good one but knowing both of the breweries involved here I'm sure it will be a really quite interesting beer and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it as well. Very curious to see how it turns out. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery websites, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Dugas and from Omnipoil before. No doubt I will add more from both breweries in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then. And we'll kick off with Dugas Brewery first off since... This is the brewery who actually brewed the beer, if you like. So, Dugas Brewery, as I've told you before, are based in Landvetter on the outskirts of Gothenburg, Utebori, here in Sweden. It's very close to the airport up there, actually. But the brewery was established back in 2005 in Mullendal, to the south of Gothenburg, by Mikael Engström Duge. And a few years previously to this, in 2002, Mikael had actually met an Englishman who was selling second-hand brew kits and things around Sweden. And this really got Mikael thinking about... Um, making his own beer and how cool it would be to have his own company that brewed its own beer. So after this he went on and studied the Swedish alcohol laws quite closely. He went and visited some other breweries to get all the information that he could and he started buying up equipment to put together his own brewery and this culminated with the opening of the first brewery in Mullendal back in 2005. Over the next few years they continued to grow but by 2009 this brewery had really kind of outgrown its purpose if you like. They were struggling to kind of keep up with the demand for their beer. So they moved to Landvetter in 2010. The older brewery had started off with a capacity, or finished off with a capacity rather, of 1,500 hectolitres of beer per year, but the new brewery when they moved in had an annual capacity of around 8,000 hectolitres, and this has been more than doubled in recent years. In 2016 and 2017 they went through quite a considerable expansion phase, but over the years this brewery has become very well known for its fruit and sour beers, and they've also been working heavily on their uh, barrel ageing programme as well, and producing some more IPAs as well. The Crush series is a very interesting series of beers. They've been using a little bit of rice uh, in these IPAs from what I understand to give it a nice oily mouthfeel but I really recommend you check out Crush and Fresh if you get the chance. And I would also argue that Dugas Brugger are one of the best coffee stout producers in the world. They did um, a few collaborations with Hunter and Sons and another Swedish coffee roastery as well who I forget the name of but if you get the chance to try coffee stouts from Dugas I would really really recommend that actually it's only recently in, um, that they've started to do things from the uh, from the IPA side and they're doing very well at that as well. Another important point to note about this brewery is that they're one of the co-owners of the two brewers beer bars in Gothenburg along with All In Brewing as well and I would recommend that you visit the Tredje Linjegatan one in particular because that is the original one and that's why the 
regarded as one of the best craft beer venues in Gothenburg actually. You will see a little out and about video uh, publishing from there at some point fairly soon actually because I got the chance to go and visit that when I was up in Gothenburg recently. Another interesting point as well is that uh, Mikkel's daughter is also one of the co-owners of Electric Nurse Brewery actually and a lot of the Electric Nurse beers are brewed at Dugas Bravery too so if you get the chance to try some of those, those are also very good. But yeah, definitely one of the Swedish craft breweries that you want to check out if you get the chance. And pretty much just pick a style of beer from these guys that you enjoy. I've had Trippels, um, have I had a Trippel? No, sorry, I've had a Quadrupel from these guys. I've had a lot of IPAs, a lot of fruit sours and things like that. Just pick a style of beer from Dugas that you like and I'm sure you'll be in it for a very, very good experience. I'd love to try a Scotch Ale from them at some point though. I think that's one of the few styles that I haven't had along with like a Doppelbock or something like that. But one of the best Swedish craft breweries at the moment and definitely worth checking out if you get the chance. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Dugas Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more, of course, check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and of course you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages as well to see all the different beers that they've done. I would say though the Untapped page for Dugas is incorrect because it says they've only produced 41 different types of beer and if you look at the brewery website you'll quickly learn that that is most definitely wrong. They're a very very prolific brewery actually. But anyway on to the Stockholm side of this beer then on to Omnipoil. So Omnipoil were founded back in 2011 by Henrik Fenty, who's a long time home brewer and Carl Grandin who was a clothing designer. So the two met one day and they started, um, they decided to start a brewery together after they were talking about how insular the craft beer scene was within Sweden and further abroad. So they wanted to reinvigorate the craft beer scene in Sweden from both a stylistic and from a gastronomic point of view. So they felt that the partnership between a home brewer and a designer was uh, very logical actually. But the name is derived from omnipotent chicken, so omni, pollo, pollo being Spanish of course for chicken, and these guys are gypsy brewers so they have no brewery of their own and as a result they use the spare capacity of various other breweries to brew, brew and they'll brew many collaboration beers as a result of this actually quite a few of their beers are brewed at Popol's from what I understand actually and I think they do some of the evil twin things most of the imperial stouts are brewed at uh, Dugas Brewery as well and they're still brewing a good number of things at the De Prof Brewery in Locriste Hefte uh, near Ghent in Belgium from what I understand and there's a few other things going on in various different places as well. These days they're exporting to over 30 different countries from what I understand and recently they've also opened up, uh, well a couple of years back actually, they've also opened up the Omnipoils Hat in Stockholm too which is a collaboration with Pizza Hat which became really quite popular in the city and um, it's got a number of the different Omnipoil beers on tap and uh, a lot of really nice pizza as well. In 2019 they also opened up another bar in Hamburg in Germany as well and according to Untap they've got somewhere in the region of 300 different beers at the moment as well. So another very very prolific brewery. Quite often the Gypsy breweries are actually um, but this is another Swedish brewery that you definitely need to check out if you get the chance. Quite recently you would have seen me review the Tetragrammatron um, from these guys as well which was a really nice New England IPA. Probably my favourite beers that I've had from these guys so far probably would be the Nebuchadnezzar. That's a lovely um, big West Coast double IPA. The Tetragrammatron is like a really nice New England one as well. Fata Morgana is a really good beer also and these big cakey Imperial Stouts that Omnipoil do as well are really quite interesting. One of the things to note about Omnipoil though is that um, they're not such a... these guys are very interesting because when they do the pure brewing such as they do with Tetragrammatron Grammatron or with uh, Nebuchadnezzar, they do very well at it, but when they add the flavour essences into the beers as they do with the um with the, the Imperial Stouts and stuff like this, they also do very well. So they do really two different types of brewing and that's one of the things I think that makes these guys really quite interesting. But Henak is a nice guy, I've bumped into him at one or two um, different beer fests. It was actually an ethnic Ethiopian uh, which was quite interesting. I didn't realise that when, until I met him actually. Um, but a very nice guy and always willing to talk about his beer and stuff like that too. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Omnipoil for the moment. One of the really interesting Swedish craft breweries. But again, if you want to learn more about this brewery, check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer and see how we get on. So as you can see, the artwork on this one is most definitely on the Pollo, no doubt the handiwork of Carl Grandin. 
Um, it says on the side here, a bourbon barrel aged blueberry and cheesecake stout brewed by Dugas and Omni Poyle. Let's take that again, a bourbon barrel aged blueberry and cheesecake stout brewed by Dugas and Omni Poyle. Double take. So um, yeah, I thought I'd misread that there. But yeah, no, really nice. Um, you can see on the side here, this is one of the things that shows you this is part of the Dugas barrel aging program. You'll get some really, really nice beers out of that. Windmill and Airport was one that always sticks in mind. I think that was a collaboration with uh, Brauerei de Molen from uh, Bro de Graven down in the Netherlands. But plain back black uh, bottle cap on this one, 330 milliliter bottle. I can't remember how much this beer cost. It was either 60 or 70 Swedish crowns. But I mean, compared to the prices you'll pay in Scotland for this, because it's an import and of course private businesses and all that, rather than publicly owned Sistembolaget, um, this one is actually a pretty good price, like six pound, well, probably nearer, six pounds 50, like, eight euros, something like that, for a beer of this quality, you can't really complain about that. That's a good price, in my opinion, for a big 15% Imperial Stout. But without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. The other thing I should say about this is that apparently the original barrel aged version of this was aged for nine months in uh, Heaven Hill bourbon barrels from America. I'm not sure if this one has been aged in something a little bit different. It didn't say on... Um, see Stembo Lager or on either of the websites and things like that so yeah but um, yeah as you can see when we've poured this one as you would expect it's poured a lovely dark sort of ebony rosewood colour you can see the head on this one is fading away a little bit and that is one of the things you would expect that the head on a big 15% beer like this is going to fade away quite quickly but for the moment there is about a quarter finger of a frothy quite dark um, tan coloured head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there but you know overall it looks pretty nice and pretty much what you would expect from a big imperial style but yeah definitely a dark ebony rosewood colour. If I put the light through this there's a wee bit of a coca-cola coloured edge to this one but otherwise um, it really is pretty much pitch black ebony sort of thing. So um, yeah that looks really quite nice and kind of what you would expect. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just to see how we get on with this one. Yeah, <laughs> straight away it's it's a bit nostalgic for me. I mean, I always, it was really cool to come over here to Sweden and try some of these big Omnipoil stouts for the, the first time. Um, it, was, it, was, it was awesome actually and I really like that about this um, about this beer. I mean, straight away you get those lovely big, almost like chocolate brownie, clad kaka, kind of cakey sort of things out of this. It's got a lovely big kind of chocolate cakey base to it. You can smell the cheesecake on top of that though, which is really quite interesting. One of the things I have to say as well about my time in Sweden, it's been like nearly four and a half years now. One of the things that always surprises me here is that there's not more Swedes with diabetes. The amount of cake and candy and all of these kind of things that the Swedes eat and you know you go to Hemikfell and stuff like this you know you just wonder how do the Swedes, how are the Swedes so healthy there's so much sugar and things over here um, but I guess not as bad as in America and stuff like that right enough but um, yeah you get beers like this and I can see exactly why it would be a Swedish brewery that does stuff like this um, but yeah lovely big sort of Kladkirka chocolate brownie, milky chocolate base to this beer and um, you really can smell that kind of cheesecakey note to it as well. There's a few sort of woody and nutty undertones in there, you can definitely pick up a little bit of vanilla out of this which is no doubt coming from the bourbon barrels. Um, I've always found if we talk about American whiskey, bourbon, uh, compared to the Scotch whiskey, uh, which of course I would be more familiar with, but you, it, to me American whiskey is a lot more brown sugary and you can really smell a little bit of that more kind of light bourbony quality to this one rather than the big kind of more toasty scotch whiskey I guess um, but yeah a lovely kind of br there's a, it's almost like sugar cane actually it's almost a little bit like a sugar cane's kind of infused into the whole base of this beer but some nice big oaky notes to it a lot of vanilla as well and um, sweet more milky chocolate as well but probably the vanilla is giving you the impression of a milky chocolate probably like a sort of 30% cocoa kind of thing um, but yeah, the aromas in this beer 
come across as being absolutely lovely. Um, you can pick out the blueberries in this one straight away, so probably it's got a cheesecake flavour essence in there and a little bit of the blueberry one as well, but the blueberries come across as very kind of thick and juicy if that makes sense. And that probably tell, that that's a kind of giveaway with it if you like, because if you actually add blueberries into the beer, they'll come across as quite tart and things as you would normally get in like a Berliner Weiss or something like that. Um, but yeah, um, on the hoppy side of things, there's maybe a little bit of grassiness, a little teeny bit of earthiness or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if Will You Met is one of the hops that they've used in here, just from some of the fruity notes to this beer. But the focus really is on the, the malt base in this one. Um, there's maybe a bit of brown sugar in there, like a sweet caramel as well. Um, but I think it's mainly a more milky chocolate, a sort of woody, vanilla type quality to this beer. Um, it really is more chocolatey rather than anything else actually um, but the, the cheesecake, the way the sweet cheesecake and the blueberries come out of this is very very nice so just pay attention to the more malty side of this beer then on the fruity side of things as I mentioned earlier the blueberries are most definitely there um, big juicy blueberries a little bit of a kind of figgy quality as well and um, maybe blackcurrant and blackberries in there there is something that just tells me there might be a little bit of will you mate or something like that as well but you know northern brewer bramlings cross sometimes those can give you um things like that as well they can give you these nice big fruity notes um northern brewer is quite a popular one to use in doppelbox and bramlings cross is quite popular in english barley wines and stuff like that as well um but yeah a really interesting aroma this one Pardon me, but in fairness, when I think about it, it doesn't smell too different from the original um, anagram, if you like. I remember the other anagram having a big clad kirka type, um, clad kaka rather, I should say, clad kaka type um, sweetness to it. It's a very, very sweet imperial stout, this, but that's exactly what you would expect from the likes of Omni Poyo, of course, when they get involved in these things. And some of the Dugas stouts can be very big in things too. But um, yeah, without further ado then, let's just have a, a, take of the, uh, a taste of this one. Um, as always, take a bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But this one is the barrel-aged version of Anagram from Dugas Brewery in Gothenburg and Omni Poyo in Stockholm, both from here in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Scott, an imperial stout an imperial bar bourbon barrel aged blueberry cheesecake stout at 50%. Let's go. Yeah. Again, this beer is quite. <laughs> it's one of these ridiculous beers. It's, it's really very nice, actually. Um, so for me, one of the things I would always state when we, before we go through this review is that um, barrel aging, I think it can be a kind of mixed bag if you like. I have to admit I prefer the non-barrel aged mouthfeel of a lot of these beers. I find that barrel aging tends to kind of thin the mouthfeel out a little bit. And you can feel that with this one. I mean, this beer is not as thick, I don't think, as the original anagram would be. But I mean, take nothing away from it. This is really nice. And this, is, I think, is probably one of the better bourbon barrel aged beers that I've come across before actually um, but um, it would be difficult to say whether it is um, an improvement on the original if you like because I really did like the original the no I've had the Noah, I've had the um, the Yellow Belly um, I've not had the Aeon yet, the Aeon is one that I really need to try from Omni Poil but I'll tell you straight away this is a really nice big sweet imperial stout if you love your sweet stouts you are really going to enjoy this one I have to say But I think you can feel with this one a little bit that it's not quite as thick as some of the ones that you're going to come across from Omni Poyo. And in fairness, this one is 3% higher in alcohol, I think, than most of them. Most of them tend to sit around the 12, sometimes 13% mark. But I do find this one just a little bit lighter in its mouthfeel compared to um, the Noah's and the the uh, the yellow bellies and stuff like this actually but regardless it is still a really quite nice beer one of the best beers I had actually from Omni Poil was the Outside the Lines which was done in collaboration with Trillium and you know likewise Dugas with their stouts with uh, Hunter and Son and stuff and the Ijo uh, Idiot as well is a really nice um, Imperial Stout too so two very capable breweries involved in this one but I'll tell you this is a nice beer and it's definitely one of the nicer examples or one of my one of my more favoured examples of a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout. But yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this one a little bit more then. So 
So yeah, um, straight away in the middle of the palette then, you'll feel that nice kind of cakey quality. That just blankets the middle of the tongue. You can feel there is a little bit of a black malty dryness to this one. That comes out a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste, but it really is smoothed out and it's the barrel aging that does that. You can feel it. It's almost like you've got the black malt infused into the kind of oaky, woody qualities. And as you move further forward on the palette, the vanilla, I think, comes out as well. And if you go to the very centre of your palette and then just push forward, you'll start to get the kind of vanilla qualities to this beer. And likewise, if you go to the front corners of your palette and then move in a little bit, you'll start to find the kind of nutty qualities in this beer as well. Um, you can taste the cake, the cakey notes in this beer, the sort of cheese cakey qualities, they come out a little bit more in the aftertaste towards the front of the tongue and from what I remember of the original anagram it was a little bit more kind of infused like that so it's interesting that those flavours move forward on the palate a little bit and they almost come across as more of a subtlety rather than a kind of centre point of the beer actually. Um, but again, I think this is one of the things, as I was mentioning earlier, when the, the barrel aging always takes your mouth fuel down a little bit, it thins the beer out, in my opinion. But yeah, the way that the brown sugars from the bourbon come out in this beer is really nice. It's... Um, it's, it's really interesting that because it's almost, um, it's not quite as sweet as rum, but I find compared, as I say, compared to Scotch whisky, which I'm more used to being Scottish, of course, but um, I find American whisky quite sweet. And the way that the brown sugars from the whisky come across in this are, um, are it really is like a sort of sugar cane thing. It's, it's not a million miles away from what you might expect from rum. To be honest with you, but I guess probably the fact um, that this beer has a little bit of a, of a vanilla element to it as well is probably adding to that kind of thing. So that's a really interesting point to make about this beer as well. Um, but the malt base is really quite nice. You do have these kind of cladkaka um, sort of bur uh, sort of brownie type flavors in the middle of your palate too. That big cakey presence is still there, but to me it's a little bit more subdued compared to the original version and from what I remember of the Noah and the um, and the, the yellow belly and stuff like this too. Um, but it is a pretty damn nice beer, this I have to say. It gets a thumbs up from me. It's definitely one of the more... Um, it, it would kind of go into my top bourbon barrel aged category or the, the, the list of my bourbon barrel aged beers that I would like. I'm still a bit torn, if you like, when it comes to, um, to bourbon barrel aging. I'm not sure it's quite necessary, but I mean, this beer is nice, but I think compared to the original, it's not all that necessary, but it does work. Um, some people will really, really like this one even more than the original, but I would love to try the two of these beers together and just see exactly what influence the bourbon barrel aging has on it. The way the brown sugars and the whiskey notes come out in this one is very, very nice, but um, I would be curious to see what my opinion would be with a blind tasting as to whether I prefer the original anagram or the, the bourbon barrel aged one. But yeah, the focus on this beer is all in the centre of your palate and the way these flavours come out. Um, so yeah, um, it's got a beautiful flavour to it, this beer. And you will find the further you go into the aftertaste, it does dry out more, as, as I was mentioning earlier. But it's got everything that you would expect from one of these big Omnipoyo type Imperial Stouts. Um, as you come further forward on the tongue as well, you're going to notice the more you drink of this beer, um, some of the, the cakey flavours come out a little bit more towards the front of the tongue, just behind the fruity part of the beer. Um, but you can feel that those are a little bit more toasty and black, if you like, um, in this one compared to some of the other um, Omnipoyo beers that I've had before. So I think this one is a little bit higher in IBUs, perhaps, than some of the other Omnipoyo beers. But flavour-wise, it's up there with them, so don't worry about that. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of this beer, then, back corners of the palate, there is a little bit of earthiness there. Um, as you come further forward, on the sides of the tongue, you can feel the earthiness spreading forward a little bit. There's maybe a teeny touch of a floral quality on the front corners of the tongue. Then around the very front curve of the palate, it's just a little bit lighter and grassy. And then behind that front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. But you've also got the blueberry flavour essence in here as well that's playing a role.
So yeah, when you take this beer in, the blueberry is really quite present. And then it fades away and becomes a little bit more juicy, if that makes sense. It comes across the it comes across as juicy, but at the same time a little bit oily. But then as you go further into the aftertaste, you'll feel the middle of your palate just drying out and gradually becoming a bit more black malty and a bit more cakey. But then um, on the front curve of the palate, you're going to start to notice a little bit of... Um, a it's almost like a teeny bit of tartness from the blueberries. Um, but you've also got the kind of figgy, raisiny type flavours that you would expect from, say, Williamette or Northern Brewer or um, Bramling's Cross or something like that. There's definitely some more complex uh, notes to the fruit in this one than simply blueberries, actually. If you had add if you had added blueberries to the brew in this one, what you would notice is that round the front edge of the tongue you'd get the the juiciness, it would suppress some of the IBUs of this beer. And in fairness, when this one is barrel aged for, I'm guessing, at least six months or nine months, the hops are going to drop off in this one considerably. Um, and you don't get that in this beer. This one still does have a good little bit of IBU to it, but we'll talk about that in the mouthfeel. Um, but that's one of the main ways you can tell that there's a little bit of um, a flavour essence used in this one because you don't you do get a bit of juiciness around the edge of the tongue, but I think it's blueberry flavour essence that's added into this one on top of their, their base recipe, if you like, for the Imperial Stouts. I think with the Noah and... Um, things like that. They have got a similar base recipe for these, but they change it a little bit depending on what essences and stuff they're using. But this is a really nice beer in terms of its flavour, and it's definitely one of my more favoured um, bourbon barrel aged ones, actually. The bourbon barrel aging really does work quite well with this one. The way that the brown sugars come out a little bit more, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's almost like a kind of caramel brownie with a bit of blueberry added to it, to be honest. The cheesecakey flavours are quite interesting because, like I say, they come out a little bit more on the front of the palate, whereas I remember with the original anagram that they seem to be infused throughout the whole thing. So bear that in mind with this beer. It would be cool to do a sort of... Um, comparison between this one and the original. So maybe I'll need to see if I can get a hold of an original version and another one of these and see if we can do a comparison review at some point. Maybe a, a little project for the future there. But in terms of its flavour, you can't fault this beer at all. It is a really nice example of uh, a bourbon barrel uh, aged uh, Imperial Stout. So thumbs up to Omnipoil and Dugas for this one. Two very good producers in this uh, Imperial Stout category and it's not surprising that they've pulled off something really quite nice like this. So um, yeah, let's have a look at the mouthfeel of this beer then. So yeah, definitely quite a full bodied beer this one. That's one of the other things I would say about it is that it is one of the thicker uh, barrel aged stouts that I've come across. So lovely big oily mouthfeel this one. The carbonation is very very smooth. Um, in terms of the malt base, this beer it actually has a very good balance between the dryness, the sort of smooth qualities from the barrel aging and also a little bit of sweetness too. The further you go into the aftertaste with this you can really feel a little bit of that bourbon brown sugar pushing its way out of this beer and some of the vanilla and chocolatey sweetness there. I've got a little fruit fly. Things are annoying. Um, but yeah, some of the um the the sort of the way the malt base in this one is balanced is really nice. This is definitely one of the drier Imperial stouts that I've come across from Omnipoil. Um, I can't think for Dugas. I think it's probably about similar in terms of its dryness to Egypt or something like that. Um, but yeah definitely one of the drier Imperial stouts you'll find from the Omnipoil side of things. In terms of its IBUs, I think we're talking about 50 or 60 IBUs in this, maybe even a little bit more than that. Um, nice little bit of juicy fruitiness in there as well, um, both from the hops, and you've got a little bit of a thicker, more oily fruitiness from the the flavour essence as well, and um, a little bit of hoppy bitterness too, and the malt base, like I say, is really well balanced between roastiness, it gets a bit drier into the aftertaste, the woody notes, and also a little bit of that kind of brown sugary sweetness too. But to sum it up, a really interesting beer, that it, it really takes you a bit of time just to digest this one, so I'm suspecting that when I check the time of this video, it will be a little bit longer than some others. But a lovely beer this, and I would recommend that you try it if you get the chance. But with these two breweries involved, not surprising in the slightest. But um, yeah, let's just leave it at that for this one then. This one is the Anagram barrel aged version at 15% ABV. 
a bourbon barrel aged blueberry and cheesecake imperial stout from Omnipoyo in Stockholm and Douglas Brewery from Gothenburg. They've pulled off a really nice beer here, but that's not at all surprising if you know anything about these breweries. So, um, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Omnipoyo and from Dugas. We will return to these breweries at some point in the near future, no doubt. But thank you again for watching. Check out my social media and I will catch you guys very soon. Until the next time, it's Slanger just now and I'll catch you guys later. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Make sure you try this beer.